Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeremy McCain, founder and CEO of OCN.ai. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at an extraordinary discovery in deep sea science that could change how we understand our planet's oceans. We're talking about dark oxygen production, or DOP, recently unveiled in a groundbreaking new paper by Sweetman and collaborators. Now, this phenomenon was discovered in the clarion Clipperton zone, or some refer to it as the CCZ of the Pacific Ocean. Now, this area is known for its rich deposits of polymetallic nodules, which are of great interest for deep sea mining because it has all these metals that are necessary for battery production, right? However, the discovery of DOP adds a new layer of complexity to our understanding of these deep sea environments. Traditionally, we believe that deep sea sediments primarily just consume oxygen due to the respiration of benthic organisms and microbial activity. But Sweetman's team discovered that polymetallic nodules can actually, get this, produce oxygen through electrochemical reactions, even in the absence of light. How is this magic possible, you might ask? Well, this is going to change everything that we think that we know about deep sea oxygen dynamics. So let's get into the specifics. What did they do? How did they figure this out? So the researchers used in situ benthic chamber experiments to measure sediment Community Oxygen Consumption, or SCOC for short. Now, these chambers were placed on the seafloor, and oxygen levels were monitored over time, and the team included various treatments in their experiments, such as adding dead algal biomass, dissolved inorganic carbon, uh, ammonium, and cold filter seawater alongside control experiments with no additional components. What they found was nothing short of remarkable. In some cases, instead of oxygen levels dropping as what you would probably expect, they increased. And this pointed to the presence of an oxygen producing process. Now the team hypothesized that high voltage potentials measured on the surfaces of polymetallic nodules were driving this electrochemical reaction. Basically, think of this as like act acting like a battery, right? A natural battery in the ocean. The voltages came out to reach upwards of 0.95 volts, which is just shy of a AA battery, but sufficient enough to drive electrolysis of seawater. Essentially, the nodules split the water molecules apart and into oxygen and hydrogen and even in complete darkness. This discovery of DOP suggests that the deep sea is not just this passive environment where oxygen is consumed, but it also is an active site of production of oxygen under certain circumstances. Now, to illustrate this, let's look at figure one uh, in the document. This figure shows oxygen concentrations measured by calibrated sensors over time during benth different benthic chamber incubations conducted on the 5D, 5E, and 7A research cruises. Each treatment, such as the dead algal biomass and dissolved inorganic carbon with ammonium, shows distinct oxygen concentration profiles. For example, the green, blue, and red lines in the 5D figure represent these treatments respectively. Notably, there are instances where oxygen levels increase, particularly in the dead algal biomass treatment, indicating net oxygen production. Minor drops in oxygen concentration profiles are due to seawater dilution when samples were collected, and initial stabilization was observed when stirrers were turned off to allow for substrates to settle. All right. So let's look at figure two, which presents box, uh, box and whisker plots of background corrected voltage potentials on nodule surfaces. Now, these nodules were collected from three different areas licensed for research and mining. Those areas were Nori D, UK1, and BGR. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. I'll clarify this. Nori D, UK1, and BJ, BJ, well, BGR, sorry, refer to the specific licenses with inside the Clarion Clipperton zone. Nori D is an area licensed to Nauru Ocean Resources, Inc. Now, this is a company exploring the potential for mining polymetallic nodules. UK1 is an area licensed to a UK-based entity for a similar exploratory purpose. And BGR stands for the Federal Institute for Geosciences, Natural Resources of Germany, which is also conducting research and exploration. That's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother time. But measurements were taken in two different temperatures, 21 degrees Celsius and for all nodules and five degrees Celsius for specific nodules. Now, when you look at these plots, they show the distribution of voltage potentials with the mean indicated by the X symbol. This median by a line and the box representing the interquartile range 
The whisker bars show the full range of data values. Multiple technical replicates were measured, indicating the reliability and variability of these potentials. Now, the consistent high voltage potentials supports the hypothesis that these nodules drive electrochemical reactions leading to oxygen production. This amazing discovery advocates for a precautionary approach to deep sea resource exploitation. We must prioritize the extensive research that must take place and environmental monitoring before proceeding with activities that could ultimately disrupt these fragile ecosystems. Protecting these areas is not about just conserving biodiversity, but also preserving the fundamental processes that regulate our planet's health. In conclusion, the discovery of DOP at the abyssal seafloor, I mean, it really challenges our understanding of deep sea biogeochemistry, and it underscores the need for real careful consideration of any human activities whatsoever in these environments. This research highlights the complexity and the fragility of these deep sea ecosystems and the importance of preserving them for future generations. So that was a lot to take in, I'm sure. But if you are really interested in this kind of stuff, we're going to do a lot more. I highly recommend also reading the paper by Sweetman and his team. The link is provided below in the description. I just want to thank you for taking this deep dive with me on dark oxygen production and we'll do a lot more of these kinds of videos so uh, this is on youtube uh, for those that are seeing this don't forget to do all the things the like subscribe and share this video to spread awareness about the important of uh, importance of deep sea conservation because you know what as dr sylvia earl says if there is uh, no green there's no blue there's no blue there's no green it all connects together uh, and it is our heritage as a human family on Spaceship Earth.